20 female inmates are suing the Clark County Sheriff and others. The lawsuit comes eight months after a Clark County corrections officer was accused of selling jail keys to male inmates. For a thousand bucks, the men allegedly gained access to areas where female inmates were being held. The allegations describe a night of terror at the Clark County Jail. Female inmates enduring threats, assault, and at the hands of male inmates. And their attorneys say it went on for hours. In all this time, no intervention from the jail. Over a number of hours, no intervention from the jail. Nothing seen on cameras, nothing seen uh, by jail officers doing routine checks. The sheriff says he is furious. One of his former employees allegedly sold a key card, giving the male inmates access to those female dorms. But he says after an exhaustive investigation, which included dozens of interviews and looking for hours at that surveillance video, he is certain no women were sexually assaulted. It was the middle of the night when several men, their faces covered with towels, made their way into the women's dorms at the Clark County Jail. That October 2021 night was described by some of the women as a night of terror, and the group spent 20 minutes passing between blocks. But Sheriff Jamie Knoll says after an exhaustive investigation and looking through surveillance video, they believe those claims are unfounded. But the attorney representing more than 20 women who filed the suit says it's not what's on camera, it's what we don't see. The problem with Sheriff Knoll's attempt at transparency is the fact, a fact he knows very well, is that the jail camera, which was in the location to capture exactly what happened on that night, was not operational. They describe a night of alleged rape, threats, and abuse. Tonight, 20 female inmates are suing the Clark County Sheriff and others. Thanks for joining us for Wave News at 6. I'm Nick Pickton for John Bull tonight. The lawsuit comes eight months after a Clark County corrections officer was accused of selling jail keys to male inmates. For a thousand bucks, the men allegedly gained access to areas where female inmates were being held. Wave News reporter David Mattingly tells us why the women are now seeking damages. The allegations describe a night of terror at the Clark County Jail. Female inmates enduring threats, assault, and rape at the hands of male inmates. And their attorneys say it went on for hours. In all this time, no intervention from the jail. Over a number of hours, no intervention from the jail. Nothing seen on cameras, nothing seen uh, by jail officers doing routine checks. You can't imagine, none of us can't imagine who weren't there, how awful this really was. October 24th, 2021, jail officer David Lowe allegedly sold male inmates keys to access the female pods in the jail. In the lawsuit, the women describe male inmates invading their pods with towels and blankets covering their heads and faces. They then grabbed and groped the female inmates, exposing their genitals to the women and making sexual and threatening comments. And at least two of the female inmates were raped. After a review of video surveillance, Lowe was arrested and fired. His case is still pending. But afterward, the women allege they were put in holding cells, questioned by investigators, put on lockdown, and forced to sleep with the lights on. Their attorneys want to know how thoroughly the department investigated the men. I don't know if I, I will use the word cover up, but I think it was um, neglected to the extent that they hoped it would go away. The Clark County Sheriff's Office does not comment on pending lawsuits. According to the interview we had with David, these are the officers who were on duty. The supervisor was Sergeant Mark Meyer, who would be solely responsible for the entire crew for that shift. Assisting Mr. Meyer would have been Corporal Dakota Brown. And although the lying derelict Sheriff Jamie Knoll has been telling everyone that there will always be two people in the area known as the main control room, which is the monitoring station, would always have two 
officers in there at all times. There was not two officers in there that night, according to Mr. Lowe's interview. There was one by the name of Jesse McCutcheon. And as far as for the corrections officers, between pods one through four, the way those officers conduct their shifts is that if you were a corrections officer and assigned to a pod for the first half of your shift, there would be a corresponding pod in which you would work for the second half of your shift. Assigned to pod one for the first half of the shift and pod four for her second half of the shift was Cassidy Wilson. And Cassidy's partner for the day was Caleb Boger. Corrections officers responsible for pods two and three were David Lowe and Austin Phillips. According to the women's lawsuit, the information that has been recorded would suggest that these women were punished shortly after they were raped. That would imply that there was an officer that began cruel and unusual type of punishments to these ladies at the end of the shift of the night in question. So which officer was working at that time on that shift in that pod? The answer is Cassidy Wilson would have been the officer that was assigned to work the second half of the shift in pod four, which is where the alleged incident happened. According to their lawsuit, they had their lights turned on, their dark privileges revoked. After, but afterward, the women alleged they making were put in holding it known cells, questioned by investigators, that the incident put on had occurred, and forced to sleep with the lights on. So pod four would have been under the supervision of Sergeant Mark Meyer and Corporal Dakota Brown and the corrections officer was Cassidy Wilson and Officer Jesse McCutcheons was alone in the main control room otherwise known as the monitoring room area. Now this information has not been validated by the courts yet or even off official record. We are simply going off of the interview in which we did with Mr. Lowe after the incident. Since we last updated you about this case, the Clark County prosecutors and sheriff finally charged one of the inmates with stealing the keys, inmate Jordan Parker Sykes, which poses the question, how could David Lowe have sold keys if they were actually stolen by an inmate? 
You know why? Because don't fuck around like that around here. And I am tired of you lying to me. And I'm done. You had your chance to tell me the truth, and you're lying. Stand the fuck up. Stand up. You want to tell the truth now? That's all I want. I don't want no lies. I don't want no made up bullshit. All I want is the truth.